I have a question for you. Are you tired of being tired, stressed out all the time, tense, irritable? What about constantly craving sugar, coffee, chocolate, soda, or something that can lift you up? I think that most of us living in these modern times do. And you may be skeptical about this, but one huge reason is that we just don't move enough. Let me explain. Think about the primitive man, hunting and gathering for survival, always on the lookout for food, shelter, and protection from danger, right? Well, guess what? We have the same body our fellow primitive man had, and it has not changed since then. But today, we burn almost half the calories. Imagine our body as a machine with different parts, all related to each other. Heart, lungs, brain, glands, stomach, intestines, kidneys, pancreas, muscles, bones, etc., etc. They are all in constant communication with one another in order to synchronize their functions. And what's important that we understand is that movement activates this whole network we call our organism. Just to give you an example, think about walking. When we walk, we're helping our blood circulate more easily, thus giving a break to the heart. We breathe deeper, and that way we oxygenate our whole body more thoroughly. We sweat, and by sweating, we eliminate harmful toxins. We tense different muscles, not only strengthening our bodies, but we burn extra calories and fat. We even release endorphins, the amazing hormones that can make us feel good optimistic and friendly. In other words, movement is essential in maintaining the health of our body and mind, and there is no substitute for it. No pill, no machine, no surgery. If we don't move enough throughout the day, we make our bodies and minds vulnerable, weak, and eventually sick. And mind you, exercising one hour a day and then spending the rest of the day sitting down won't cut it. We need to move throughout the day. It used to be different though. Just about 50 years ago, we were still walking to the stores, making photocopies, getting up to send a fax or to hand out a document to our neighbor in the next cubicle, right? But with the birth of PCs, we can spend hours sitting in a locked, incorrect position, blocking the circulation of all our juices, pinching the nerves of our spine, breathing very shallowly and using only a few muscles repetitively. Actually, we spend hours sitting, period. We sit at home to have breakfast, in the car to go to work, at work, car again, dinner at home, and then sofa to watch TV. In the meantime, what's happening with our bodies? Well, according to Darwin, we should be adapting to this new change. Hmm, that's true. Only that adaptation usually takes hundreds, if not thousands of years. And the changes that we have imposed to our bodies have been, one, too drastic, and two, too sudden. From having to walk and run and jump, push, pull, stretch, bend, climb, and sprint daily in order to survive, in only about 50 years, many of us just have to sit around. Did we imagine that this state of affairs would have no health consequences for us? Well, let's take a closer look at our restricted situation. We all have stress in our lives, and stress produces adrenaline, a great hormone, because it brings sugar to our blood so we can use it like fuel. Why? Remember, we still have the same body of our ancestors, and this machine is so perfect, so genially constructed, that in the face of danger, like um, a tribal enemy attacking us, this design made sure that we had enough fuel to either fight with all our strength or run for our lives, the so-called fight or flight response. This response to stress required a great deal of physical activity. And the problem is that the things that stress us today are not a tribal enemy. They're more like a deadline, bills we have to pay, a breakup. The system doesn't care, so it keeps releasing adrenaline, still fueling us, but we neither fight nor flee. And that means that we don't burn the fuel. Now remember, fuel is sugar in your blood, and we always need some sugar to survive. 
but too much sugar could lead to diabetes and other health problems. So how does our body deal with this extra fuel? It gets rid of it with the help of insulin. Insulin is like a little train sent by our pancreas. This train removes the excess of sugar and carries it to the liver. The liver, in turn, converts this sugar into fat. Now, here is the problem. When we don't move enough, we don't burn this sugar. So we accumulate too much sugar in our blood. The pancreas starts releasing too much insulin to remove this sugar. And that's when we experience what it's called a sugar drop. The symptoms are feelings of irritability, fatigue, sleepiness, and we start craving sweets. So what do we do? If we get angry or anxious, we'll cry, scream, smoke a cigarette, eat a bar of chocolate, or even get in a fight with someone, which means more sugar in the system. Why? Because either we ate it or because we end up creating more stress. So we feel stressed. That means adrenaline goes up. So sugar goes up. Insulin goes up, which makes sugar go down. But now we have a drop in sugar, which makes us feel tired, irritable, and needing a lift. Sure, moving around would help, but if we work sitting down all day, we can't afford to move. So instead, we eat sugar or drink coffee or smoke cigarettes. So sugar goes up again, which makes insulin go up, and then sugar goes down. We feel the drop in sugar, we get tired and sleepy and cranky, we start craving sugar, coffee, or cigarettes, and so it goes. Are you getting the vicious cycle here? So, what's the problem with this new physical arrangement? The problem is that if we keep producing adrenaline day after day, month after month, year after year, which you bet we are, and we keep not burning our fuel, the system eventually burns out. And when that happens, we may end up with diabetes, obesity, heart problems, sleeping disorders, depression, or other health complications. Okay, if all this is true, and given the fact that about 60% of jobs in America do not let us move enough, our nation should be facing a health crisis, correct? Guess what? It is. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, obesity rates doubled up in the past 30 years. And right now, 70% of Americans are overweight. In the past 25 years, the amount of people developing diabetes tripled. And mind you, diabetes may lead to blindness, amputation, and loss of kidney function. One in four adults report chronic low back pain and half the population suffered from a mental disorder at some point in their lives. And last, but definitely not least, almost four out of 10 people are at the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke right now. No wonder heart disease is the leading cause of death in America. And what are the main reasons? Bad food, smoking, and lack of physical activity, all preventable behaviors. Now, our jobs cannot force us to eat unhealthy foods or to smoke, right? But they can definitely restrict our freedom to move. What can we do? Quit our jobs? Of course not. If you work at a desk all day and want to find out about clever solutions to overcome this problem, click here. And remember, it's up to you to feel better.